I just want you want to take you a bit further through the motions in terms of of uh, regulation since we are a bit strapped for time. Um, the parts dealing with the authorities, I'll try to skim over quickly and then move to exactly exactly what's what's going on. As I mentioned in 2008, we were in a bit of a difficulty and nobody knew what was coming along and uh, everybody was looking at monsters that are going to attack us and uh, the whole face of regulation is going to change. Um, but in reality, we're coping. And uh, when you look at it, uh, and even if I can uh, make the statement uh, telling the commissioner, listen, we're in favor of these authorities because we needed harmonization. We couldn't have one authority taking its own decisions independent of the other authorities. And, the, and Caesar, the one I particularly attended when Eddie was the chairman, we used to sit around the, around the table full day uh, deciding on certain things, but then the implementation was completely different. Certain jurisdictions were implementing differently to what we were deciding as committees. And uh, this was causing us a bit of a concern because we're a small jurisdiction, uh, we'd like quality, we'd like to grow, uh, but certainly, you know, was this whole bending of what's been decided. So everybody initially was afraid. However, in reality, as things turn out, it's, it's not that. And a lot of steps have been taken towards regulatory reform in Europe, which we're very positive about as an authority. And basically, there are four major, four major uh, steps. The reform of the financial supervision, as Eddie has explained. Then reform of the financial institutions to improve financial stability and governance. Reform of the markets to bring efficiency, integrity, liquidity and transparency. And finally, finally consumers. Now, reform of the financial supervision, there's a whole history. Uh, the, uh, the problems of 2007, 2008, and this what was causing the whole, the whole issue. Then finally, um, Mr. De La Rosier came along and he had a committee of wise men, uh, very good people, uh, who then drafted the famous De La Rosier report, which I must say has also been the basis of why we carried out an independent assessment last year so that we look into ourselves and see how we are conforming to uh, the various rules and, and regulations. Most important for us as, uh, as supervisors also is the question of the, of the whole integration, how we interact uh, with these authorities in terms of their governance, in terms of what we will continue to do on a day-to-day -day basis and also how we link directly with them and with the, with, the, with the industry. Now I'd like to move more to the heart of the, of the problem. First thing, financial institutions, improved stability and governance. What has the Commission been doing and what will the authorities have to implement? Uh, these are the rules and directives uh, that are coming out. Uh, first one we had CRD3, uh, which is now moving to CRD4, and this is to give us financial stability in the institutions. There is also the part of it concerning remuneration, which I have to tell you we're looking at the, at the situation here in Malta, and we're, I have to say we're not happy with the directive. We would like to go a little bit forward because the directive talks about remuneration, it only mentions banks and MIFID companies, but it's time we start looking at the whole, at the whole sector. On the insurance side, we see solvency too. I will leave Mr. Van Huel to address that. He's the expert on the whole thing. Uh, but certainly, uh, solvency too is going to bring certain certain stabilities to the companies. Everybody at the time looks at, ah, we have to put in more money. But it's not a question of putting more money, it's more a question of governance of the, of the insurance companies, how they manage their assets. Now there is the omnibus too, and this is 
a bit of a headache because essentially the whole question is uh, certain provisions of the directive, how they are going to be you know, on the time scale, how they're going to be implemented. And there seems to be no, no coordination between, between member states. Some want a year with two, um, with two uh, solvency one and solvency two running in parallel. There are certain specific provisions. But in any case, decision making is proceeding and hopefully by after the summer this will be ready to go to, to Parliament. Credit rating agencies. Everybody blamed credit rating agencies. These became extremely important because everybody relies on, on, uh, on them and on the ratings, on the ratings um, uh, that they produced. But suddenly we had some experiences here as well in terms of looking at these agencies and what can they contribute to the market? What will they contribute to the consumers? How will consumer judge the ratings given by the agency? And there was a clear minefield. And I was very much surprised to learn that if a company is rated A rated in Malta, then a similar company may get an A rating in Ukraine and the ratings are completely different. So there was different methodologies. Nobody seemed to know what was going on, but essentially now this is clear. Rating agencies have clear parameters how they should be operating. Next one was the hedge fund directive. And um, as Eddie said, there are 92 implementing measures, but I think this directive within a short period of time has to be looked at once again. Um, I think it was hurriedly done. Uh, there wasn't sufficient consultation, or there was consultation, um, which then produced a different directive to what we were expecting. Um, there is an issue of the funds. The funds are not clear. Their legal personality in terms of the directive. But when you look at it, you say it's a step forward. Let's work with it. Let's try and guide it. And um, let's bring more stability to the system. Ultimately, also, there is governance. And, um, <clears throat> and this is where the Commission has recently published a public consultation. And I urge you to have a look at it. Uh, I tend to spend a lot of time reading, reading all these directives, making contributions, answering, helping, advising the government with the rest of the team at the MFSA. Those of you who are interested, actually, the Green Paper is my weekend reading this week, uh, so you're very welcome to participate. <laughs> now, the whole issue is being extended because everybody looks at companies. Um, most of you here hire auditors. You get a letter of engagement, which we're going to do this, but at least 16 pages of exemptions, and then we find that the auditors say we have no responsibility. And so, sorry, these are being brought in now. Standards are being improved, but the responsibility is being, is being defined, absolutely clear. So, um, and also the role that these auditors, in terms of the accounting standards, have to play in terms of financial stability. They have to be involved because ultimately we just look at the figures that are being produced and we have to analyze those figures. And then if there is no responsibility for these figures, then what are we going to do? From the, from the companies, we move to the markets and here. Um, we need to introduce certainly more transparency and efficiency. And this, uh, it started coming along uh, over the years since 2008. And it's also, and this is very good now, the way uh, the commission is looking at things is saying there is always a sunset clause. And from time to time, we start, we start reviewing. The MIFID, which was very good to introduce transparency, um, it, gives, it gives also the companies certain freedoms, but certainly it produced uh, quite more stability in terms of the, how they outreach with consumers. So it's being revised. There is also the MAD, Market Abuse Directive, uh, which will also, which will also be, be revised. Um, two issues going on. At the moment are the um, OTC derivatives, 
and the, and the short selling. Uh, there are different views um, <clears throat> in terms of the, of the short selling. I have to say I'm a bit confused because in 2008, certain jurisdictions were saying one thing. Now when the directive is in front of them, they're saying something which is completely, completely different. And the whole question, there's also a very dangerous question, is whether naked short selling should be banned or, or not banned. So uh, we're taking some tough decisions at the, at the moment. Consumers, and um, this is where I believe the Commission is acting much more uh, today. As you know, we also have um, uh, consumer complaints with us, although our powers are not uh, lim uh, rather limited. They are not at the level of an ombudsman. Uh, however, uh, there are various, various issues because these schemes, uh, essentially, one, they have to be brought in line and have a proper, a proper mechanism. Uh, there are issues of contributions. Uh, there are issues of when, uh, when something is triggered or not triggered. So uh, there still needs to do, a, to do a lot of work. What is very good also, finally, is that at some stage, I don't know when, uh, but certainly we will have a pan-European insurance guarantee scheme. This has been lacking, um, was the deposit guarantee scheme and the investor compensation have been in place now for I would say almost 10 years, and fortunately, as a result of the crisis, they are being revised. Uh, the insurance seemed to be, to be lag, lagging behind. There is also a proposed directive on mortgage credits, uh, but this is uh, still at a very preliminary, preliminary stage. Then there is the PRIPs, the package retail investment products. Again, these are at consultation stage and also, uh, finally, the Commission looks at access to basic bank accounts. I don't know what the situation in Malta, but when you look at it, uh, in a population of about 400 million, almost 10 percent in Europe, do not, have, do not benefit from having a basic bank account. And this is something that uh, the Commission wants to introduce greater, greater accessibility. <clears throat> and finally, the the usage directive, uh, we are now on to use it for. Um, this is where what the Prime Minister was saying, the flexibility in our system. Usage is being introduced as rules, so we don't have to go through the motions of Parliament, etc. But the, um, uh, there are some minor issues in terms of merger, mergers of usage funds where we have to tweak the Companies Act and hopefully this is being done next week. But what is the heart of the issue here? Uh, first, the comparison of usage and hedge funds. And that's still at the manager stage. But the question is the depository. And here, finally, uh, depositories are being introduced. There, uh, also on the hedge fund side, uh, their steps are being taken, so the depository is, uh, is, a, is a secure and, and independent institution, it's going to raise costs. It's going to cause a bit of, of uh, situations in various jurisdictions, like us here, where for a time we were lacking global depositories, but fortunately these are coming in now. And the question is their responsibility and what they are carrying. It's very important as we become more and more global as we're trying to sediment more what's being created and, and be prepared. It's not a question of, of having trained people. We have to go further now. We have to do continuous education. And people must understand. We issue consultation papers. I urge you to read them. I urge you to give us feedback, not after the whole thing has been implemented. Uh, we need to go forward, but we must do everything hand in hand together. Thank you very much.